The good shepherd has risen, who laid down his life for his sheep, and willingly died for his flock. Alleluia. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. As we come around the altar this morning, we are reminded <coughs> that Jesus seeks not only to be present, but to bring us peace. So as we come together, we call to mind our sinfulness and our weakness, asking God for gifts of pardon and strength. Lord Jesus, you came that we might have life and have it to the full. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you forgive us our sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and blood. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that putting off our old self with all its ways, we may live as Christ did, for through the healing paschal remedies you have conformed us to his nature, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Stephen, filled with grace and power, was working great wonders and signs among the people. Certain members of the so-called Synagogue of Freedmen, Cyrenians and Alexandrians, and people from Cilicia and Asia, came forward and debated with Stephen, but they could not withstand the wisdom and the spirit with which he spoke. Then they instigated some men to say, We have heard him speaking blasphemous words against Moses and God. They stirred up the people. The elders and the scribes accosted him, seized him, and brought him before the Sanhedrin. They presented false witnesses who testified, This man never stops saying things against this holy place and the law. For we have heard him claim that this Jesus the Nazarene will destroy this place and change the customs that Moses handed down to us. All those who sat in the Sanhedrin looked intently at him and saw that his face was like the face of an angel. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Blessed are they who follow the law of the Lord. Blessed are they who follow the law of the Lord. Though princes meet and talk against me, your servant meditates on your statutes. Yes, your decrees are my delight. They are my counselors. Blessed are they who follow the law of the Lord. I declared my ways, and you answered me. Teach me your statutes. Make me understand the ways of your precepts and I will meditate on your wondrous deeds. Blessed are they who follow the law of the Lord. Remove from me the way of falsehood and favor me with your law. The way of truth I have chosen. I have set your ordinances before me. Blessed are they who follow the law of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. One does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes forth from the mouth of God. Amen. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. After Jesus had fed the 5,000, his disciples saw him walking on the sea. The next day the crowd remained across the sea saw that there had been only one boat there and that Jesus had not gone along with his disciples in the boat, but only his disciples had left. Other boats came from Tiberias, near the place where they had eaten the bread. When the Lord gave thanks, when the crowd saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they themselves got into boats and came to Capernaum looking for Jesus. And when they found him across they said, the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you get here? 
Jesus answered them and said, Amen, amen, I say to you, you are looking for me not because you saw signs, because you ate the loaves and were filled. Don't work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For on him, the Father, God, has set his seal. So they said to Jesus, what can we do to accomplish the works of God? And Jesus answered and said to them, this is the work of God, that you believe in the one he sent. The Gospel of the Lord. I don't remember the year, but Mother Teresa was invited to speak before joint session of Congress, and I believe was awarded the Congressional Medal of Honor. She was only four feet 11, I think, and stooped over at that point. But she preached so powerfully, she spoke, excuse me, spoke so powerfully that all got up and applauded her even though her message was antithetical to some of them. I was thinking of her as I read our first reading today. They can't compete with Stephen's wisdom, not because he's as wise as Solomon. We don't ever hear that, but because he speaks with the authority of a life lived absolutely in conjunction with what he's saying. So what he's preaching, what he's saying, is exactly what he's living. And I think that was also the grace of Mother Teresa. Because even if you didn't agree with her message, you had to agree that she was a woman of integrity who lived everything that she spoke. Today, in this Easter season, I think we're called to do the same. We're called to be messengers of Jesus. Not wise with earthly wisdom, but wise in integrity. Wise in knowing the peace Jesus sought to give. We heard in yesterday's gospel and the week before, and the week before that, peace be with you. Jesus standing present in our midst into whatever the challenges we're facing and calling us to be his witnesses. He said it yesterday in the gospel, you are witnesses of these things. And so now he calls us. And notice, notice what happens. Notice what happens to Stephen. And it mirrors very closely what happened to Jesus. The message is attractive. The message is attractive. The message draws people in. It draws people to God, even as they're challenged. Even as they're challenged. And so we see those who are attracted to Stephen's message, the crowd growing. We see Jesus, people asking questions. How do we do what you're saying? They're attracted. They want to follow him. But we know also what happens beyond that. That when the message begins to challenge, to challenge them, to challenge us, there's a different reaction. There's a reaction that puts Jesus on the back burner. There's a different reaction, a reaction that seeks to explain his message away. Why we don't have to live it. Why it's too hard. It's too this. It's too that. It's heretical. In all of this, we are called to remain faithful to the message given us. The message is simple, that God loves us that Jesus Christ is Lord out of love for us. And so today, I want you to go 
into this beautiful day and preach, speak, live with integrity. Take the message. Take the message on the road, not just to the general out there. Okay, Lord, if I meet somebody who needs to know your word, I'm ready to speak it. Okay, Lord, if I meet somebody who asks me a question about the Son of God, I'm ready to tell them who you are. It doesn't happen that way. You know that. But you know who you're going to meet? You're going to meet the next door neighbor. You're going to meet the lady in the parking lot, the man in the grocery store. You're going to speak to your kids and your grandkids. And at the heart of all of the searching that all of us do is looking for Christ. And so find a way to share the message, the message of the good news, the message that attracts people, the message that reassures us even when we're struggling with it. Peace be with you. Even that keeps us in contact with the Lord. And so today, preach that message. Preach it boldly and yet gently. Preach it joyfully and yet absolutely realistically. We don't need Pollyannas. The message of Jesus Christ is hope and joy, which is not always easy. It is not always gladness. But it is a constant reminder that God is present. So no matter how tall you are, literally or figuratively, no matter the group that you're speaking to, keep constant the message of Jesus Christ, a gentle message of hope and life. Preach it with everything that you have and everything that you are. And people will see God. Let's bring our needs to our Heavenly Father. We pray for our church and for those who lead her, especially for Pope Francis, Archbishop Lori, for Bishop Lewandowski as we seek the city and begin reorganization of parishes and structures and communities in the city, that God may truly bless them with wisdom and insight and hope and joy. We pray to the Lord. We pray for the leaders of governments throughout the whole world. Here in our own country, our president, our governor, our Congress, our judges, all elected and local politicians. We pray also for leaders throughout the world, in Israel, in Gaza, in Iran, throughout the Middle East, in Europe and in Ukraine and Russia. We pray throughout Africa, especially the Sudan. We pray in Haiti and throughout Central and South America that God may bless the leaders in all of these places to help them focus on the gift of life, human life from all stages, from all places. We pray to the Lord. We pray for any and all who suffer in body, mind, soul, or spirit. We pray for the poor for the hungry, the homeless. We pray for the unemployed. We pray for those who are struggling with depression, loneliness, fear, or anxiety. We pray for those contemplating abortions. We pray for any and all who think violence is an answer. We pray for all of these that God may reach out to them, including and especially through our service and our sacrifice. We pray to the Lord. And we pray for those who have died, remembering in a special way Caroline Kendall, for whom this Mass is offered. We pray to the Lord. Good and gracious God, open our hearts. Help us to receive your peace, your love, your mercy, your forgiveness. Help us to proclaim the good news to others, that you are present and that you are Lord forever and ever. Amen. Amen.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May our prayers rise up to you, O Lord, together with these sacrificial offerings, so that purified by your graciousness, we may be conformed to the mysteries of your mighty love. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For, with the old order destroyed, a universe cast down is renewed, and integrity of life is restored to us in Christ. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. So Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, William, our Bishop, Dennis, Adam, and De Bruce, his assistant bishops, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face, 
Have mercy on us all, we pray that, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with St. Francis of Assisi, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, O Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer to each other a sign of that priest. Peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. Not as the world gives do I give it to you, says the Lord. Hallelujah.
Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who restore us to eternal life and the resurrection of Christ, increase in us, we pray, the fruits of this Paschal Sacrament and pour into our hearts the strength of this saving food. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. There's a couple of things I would ask you to pray for. Uh, first, today is Eleanor, tomorrow is Eleanor's 96th birthday, so we wish you a very happy birthday. It's a grace to have you with us. I hope at 36 to be still coming to Mass, so I'm pretty proud of you for being here at 96. Um, and then um, Grandma Brinker, uh, what are you going to be called? Grammy. Grammy. I, I didn't know that this was a thing, that you have to choose your, it's like the queen. She has to choose her regnal name. Grandmothers have to choose their, well, their regnal name. So. Um, uh, Jen's uh, son, Jen and Tom's son, had their first son, her first son, uh, just Saturday, right? So what, what a grace and, and a blessing uh, to share in that new life uh, uh, of the name. It's actually a girl, Sophia Ann. Good, because well, that would be a funny name for a boy, so <laughs> Sophia Ann. Uh, we, we pray for her. Wisdom, there you go. Uh, Wisdom and the, the grandmother of uh, Jesus. So, um, and then Bernice, the, the, um, you wouldn't know her. What's Bernice's last name? Bernice. Bernice, exactly. Um, I went to see her yesterday, and she's she's got some trouble with her her breathing, but she's itching and 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 she wants to get here. So we got to pray her back to health. All right. I think she's watching right now. She can't hear a word we're saying because of the microphone isn't working. I forgot to put one on, so, you know, uh, we'll just pray for her, all right? It doesn't matter what, all right? Uh, but she's, she's, she's very eager um, to get back to service, and I think that's a beautiful image uh, for us to have. The Lord be with you. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Amen. Thanks be to God.